Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 329, longest increasing path in a matrix. Given an m by n integers matrix, return the length of the longest increasing path in matrix. From each cell, you can either move in four directions, left, right, up, or down. You may not move diagonally or move outside the boundary, and wraparounds are not allowed. So if we look at this example here, this matrix given to us, our output's going to be 4. Why? Because starting from this 1, we could go to a 2, we could go to a 6, and we could go to a 9. So that's a total of a path length of 4. And there's no longer path um, that's increasing in this matrix. So if we kind of look at all the paths, so from this 9, we can't go to this 9 because it's not increasing, right? It's staying the same. Same with this 6, it's decreasing, so that's not a valid path. This 9 can't go here, this 9 can't go here, this 9 can't go here. This four can go to the nine, but then after that, we can't go any further. It could go to this eight, but after that, we can't go any further because there's no increasing path. Then we could try at the eight, can't go in any of these directions. This six could go to the nine, but then it can't go this way, that way. And then we could go, we can't go down, we can't go left. Uh, this one, oh, this is already the path that we tried. Uh, this two could go here and here. But that's only a path length of three, whereas we have the optimal four. So basically, what we want to do is for each position in our, um, you know, matrix here, we need to try all the possible, um, you know, paths that we can take, and we can cut it off immediately once we see that you know we can't go any further. So once you know, say we start at this nine, if we go to this nine and we see that okay, well, the value that we're at, this nine, is not greater than the previous value then that means that we can simply back out of searching because we know that this isn't a valid path anymore. And notice how you know we explored here and saw that we couldn't go anymore. And then when we went to this four, we also came to the same nine. What we can do is we can actually keep a memo dictionary to basically keep these paths in memory to tell us, okay, have we been to this nine here? Um, and the way we'll do that is we can think of this as being kind of like an X and Y coordinate plane. Whoops. So if this is the x's and this is the y, right? This would be, oops, uh, okay. This would be like 0.00. This would be 0 0.01, uh, you know, 0, 0.2. Or sorry, I think that's one, yeah, one zero, uh, two zero. And we can assign coordinates to each one of these points and use that as our key in the dictionary, and then keep track of whatever the longest path we could reach from that point is. Uh, that way, if we ever return to you know that point, we can simply look into the memo dictionary and reuse the computation. Because we're doing a DFS, there's going to be a lot of repeated work here because we have to try all possible paths, and we obviously don't want to be recalculating everything. So that's essentially the algorithm we want to take. We're going to parse our you know uh, matrix here from left to right, um, you know, so row by row, column by column, and we're going to try all the possible paths starting from each tile. And we're going to keep a memo dictionary to basically tell us if we visited tile before, what's the longest increasing path, you know, from that tile that we can do. So if we've already been there, we can simply just reuse the computation instead of doing it again. And, you know, we'll keep a global maximum, you know, path length that we have, and we'll re just return that at the end. So that's the idea behind the solution. It is a little bit tricky to implement. So once we go into the code editor and I walk you through it line by line, it should make uh, a lot more sense because once you see it, it, you realize it's not that complicated. There's just a few little like minor details that you need to make sure you get right uh, in order to solve this problem. But otherwise, it's quite simple. So that being said, I'll see you in the code editor and let's write the code for the solution. Okay, welcome back to the editor. Now let's write the code. Remember that we said that we need a memoization dictionary to keep track of intermediate results. That way we cannot recalculate things when we visit uh, a tile that we've already been to before. And that way we can save some computation. So let's set that up. So we're going to say self.memo is going to be an empty dictionary. And now what we need to do is we need to define uh, all the directions that we can travel to, right? We can go left, right, up, or down. So let's define that. We're going to say self.directions is going to equal to, um, you know, what are all the directions we can go in? So 1, 0, we can go 0, 1, we can go 0, minus 1. We can go, what is it, minus one and zero. Okay, so those are all four directions we can travel in. Now we need a variable to store our result. And we're gonna initialize this to one. 
because remember that a tile by itself is considered a path length of one. If we look at this path here, there's four tiles and we should output four, which means that a starting tile can be counted as part of the path. Even though we technically haven't moved to another tile, it still counts as a path length of one if you just stay at your current tile. So if you recall from the diagram, what we needed to do was go row by row, column by column, <clears throat> and basically try to find all the possible paths we can reach from a current you know, tile. So let's set that up. So we're gonna say four row in range len matrix, and we're gonna say four column in range len matrix of zero. We're gonna say our result is gonna be the maximum of whatever the result is currently, and whatever our DFS function actually finds for us by searching that row and column combination. So we're gonna call into the DFS and try to find that best path. At the end of this, all we need to do is simply return our result. This is the easy part. What we need to do now is define the DFS function that's actually gonna do the work for us. So we're gonna have this DFS function, which is gonna take the matrix as the input, the current row and the current column. Now what we need to do is we need to check whether or not the, our current position, this current row and current column combination, has actually already been visited. If it is, then that means that we'll have something in self.memo and we can reuse the value instead of recomputing it, which would be a waste of time. So we're gonna say if the current row and the current column is in self.memo, then what we wanna do is simply return self.memo of the current row and the current column. Excellent. Otherwise, we now need to do the actual computation. So remember that a tile by itself can be counted as a path length of one. So that's what the initial um, memo dictionary value for a current tile should be set as. So we're gonna say self.memo of cur row, oops, cur row, cur call is gonna equal to one. Now what we need to do is try all the possible directions that we can go in. So we're gonna say for row increment, column increment in self dot directions. We're gonna say that the new row is going to equal to the current row plus the row increment. And we're gonna say that the new column is gonna to equal to the current column plus the column increment. And now what we need to do is make sure that this new row and column that we're moving to is actually a valid tile on the board. Uh, what does that mean? So if we're at this eight and we tried to go to its right, obviously that's not within the bounds of our matrix. So when we try to access that index, we get an index error and our function would blow up, which is not what we want. So we need to make sure that we're actually within the bounds. So let's code that checkup. Uh, let's see if I can't realign this. Okay, so we're gonna say if uh, our new row is within the bounds of our matrix, len matrix, and we need to make sure the column is also, so the new column less than len uh, matrix of zero. And we need one more check. Remember that in this problem, we're only interested in paths that are increasing. There's no point of us trying all possible paths where some of them aren't even increasing. We're only interested in the ones that are increasing because that's what the solution is looking for. For example, if we're at this six, there's no point of going to the one and then the one trying all of its possible paths because we know that going from six to one wouldn't be increasing. So we don't care what comes after it because that part is invalid. So the rest of it will be invalid um, also. So we're only interested in going to tiles where one, we have you know our values within the bounds of the matrix and the actual tile that we're moving to has a value greater than our current tile. Otherwise, there's no point of exploring it. We would just be wasting DFSs for no reason. So we need to make sure that our current value, so we're gonna say matrix of the current row and current column has a value less than the tile that we're moving to. So we're gonna say matrix of new row and new column. If all these are true, then we can move to that next tile. So, whoops, this should be current call here. Uh, yeah, now we can move to that tile and we can do the computation there. So we're gonna say that the best path that we can have from our current tile, um, which is gonna be stored in self.memo, current call, is going to equal to the maximum of whatever the current best path is. So we're gonna say current row, current column, 
and one plus whatever the DFS can find by going to that next tile. Oops, just self.dfs. And we're gonna pass in the matrix, the new row, and the new column. Cool. At this point, I think we're actually missing a parentheses here. Yeah, okay, cool, that's why. Uh, we can simply return whatever our answer is, which we're gonna be storing in the memo dictionary. So that's gonna be how we write our DFS function to solve this problem. Now let's submit this code and double check that it works. And it, come on, yes, it does. Okay, cool. So what is the runtime complexity of this algorithm? Well, as we can see, we have to iterate over all the possible tiles in our, um, you know, uh, grid here, right? So we go row by row, column by column. And what this means is that we're gonna have to touch every single tile in our matrix. And in the worst case, we won't actually be doing any DFSing because these, um, you know, these checks will never be met. So we would just be going one level deep and then bouncing back each time. So what this means is that our runtime complexity is actually going to be bounded by the rows times the columns because we need to basically, um, you know, store or do that many um, iterations through kind of our input, right? We're going to be doing, it's bounded by the size of the matrix, which is rows times columns. And the space complexity is also going to be rows times columns because remember, we're still going to be calling the DFS function once for each point and the DFS function will be creating a new entry in the self.memo uh, for each current row and current column combination. So that means that in the worst case, uh, well, not in the worst case, in every single time we call this uh, function here, we're gonna be creating rows times columns entries in our self.memo dict. So that means that our space complexity is also gonna be you know, rows times columns. So that's how you solve this problem. This isn't particularly a tricky problem. I think that the only hard part is kind of figuring out this part inside here, um, how to actually figure out the best path and making sure that you're not wasting time by going to tiles that don't have uh, a value greater than your current tile because then you'd just be wasting iterations and your solution can time out. So you need to prune your search early by making sure that you're actually moving to a valid path. Otherwise, this is a pretty standard DFS um, question. You know, you're defining your four directions and then you're going in each one of them and some sort of condition needs to be met whether or not you can proceed forward. Um, but otherwise, it's relatively simple. Um, hopefully this video cleared things up and seeing the code made you understand how to solve this one. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any topics or videos you'd like me to make, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to make them for you guys. Just let me know what you wanna see and I'll get that out for you. Otherwise, in the meantime, happy elite coding and have a nice day. Bye.